So let's go ahead and continue with our problems for lessons 14 and 15. So I do have some of the practice problems, and I'm going to show you how I work them out to understand what I'm looking at. So I'm probably only going to do the first two in one, or first two sets in one video, and then I'll come to the, the final video to do the other ones. So let's go ahead and do this. Suppose that a category of world-class runners is known to run a marathon, which is 26 miles, and an average of 145 minutes with a standard deviation of 14. Consider 49 of the races. All right, so what I'm going to do right now to help myself out, my mean is 145 minutes. How do I know that? Because it says average. And then the standard deviation, I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to use the symbols. It's 14 minutes. I could, but I'm just I'm trying to simplify it as much as I can. Sample size equals 49 minutes. Okay, this is different than what I saw in lesson 13. Why is it different? This right here, and I'm going to highlight it, makes it different. I haven't been using the sample size before. This is kind of new to me in this context of these type of problems. So let's look at the first one. Find the probability that the run over will average between 142 and 146 minutes in these 49 marathons. All right, so I've got this information again, nothing from this changed. And now I'm given, I wanna know the average time between 142 and 146 minutes. Okay, so this changed everything. So now that I have it, I need to real I need to figure out what I want to do with it. So I'm going to bring up my calculator, and I'm going to have it on the screen. Let me move it over so you can still see the problem. All right, I'm going to turn it on. So. I know for a sample size of 49, that's going to equal the square root of 7. All I did is I just saw that. I'll show you on my calculator right fast to help you. So I do second square root, and if I do 49, close the parentheses, I get 7. This makes my life easier when I want to put it in. Okay because I have two values and I want to find the probability. So that means I'm going to go to, oops, sorry about that, second distribution, and I'm going to go down to normal CDF. Okay, my lowest value that I want to find between is 142. Sorry about that. I don't know why it keeps doing that. 142, and then I want to go all the way to 146. Okay, comma, I'm going to put my mean in. And then comma, I'm going to, I need to put my standard deviation in the new form. Why does it need to be in the new form? Because I have the sample size. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a parenthesis here. I'm going to do 14 divided by 7. You can, I'll show you, I'm going to go back. You can do the second 49 and then close the parentheses. But remember, at the end, you're going to need three parentheses because you have one here, you have one here, and you have one here, and you have to complete it in the thing. If not, you can get rid of the square root 49 and just put 7 under the 14. And then I hit Enter. So what do I get then? I get 0.62465, which this becomes 0 0.62465. Four, seven. Okay, that's how I solved that first one. Okay, but now it wants to know the 80th percentile. All right, it's just going to take this from again. I'm going to put it down here so I keep all my stuff straight. But now I want the 80th percentile. Well, if I remember back from lesson 13, huh, percentile. I can't do normal CDF for that. I can only do in norm. I'm going to put this here to, to make it easier on me. So same thing. Remember with inverse norm you had to have the area, you had to have the mean, and the standard deviation. And now the standard deviations changed because I have a sample size. I can go up here. I'm going to clear it out. So I'm going to go second 
distribution, and I'm going to go down to inverse norm. I'm going to change the 80th percentile to 0.80. I'm going to do comma 145 again because that's my mean, and then I'm going to do this comma, and then I'm going to do parentheses 14, and I'm going to do divided by 7. Again, I can do that. Why can I do that? Because I took the square root of it before. So I showed you in the first problem how to do it the other way, and now I'm going to show you the second way. And then I'm going to put another parentheses behind it to close it. Hit enter. All right, so what does that tell me? It tells me that the 80th percentile is 146 minutes and 68 seconds. That's what that tells me. Because if I go back and look at it, that's what that is. I need. It's going to give me an exact value. Where in number nine, it didn't. It gave me the probability this can happen to a runner. All right, let's do the last one. So I'm going to go down here, find the median. All right, that's not bad because I'm going to show you. I'm going to copy this problem exactly, and I'm going to put it down here. And the only thing I'm going to change here is where it says median. And remember, when you went back to one of the original lessons we did, the median is the breaking point where 50% of the data is below it and 50% of the data is above it. So another way to think of it is the median is the 50th percentile. So this is another inverse norm problem. Go up here. I'm going to do second distribution. Go down here to inverse norm. I'm going to do 0.50, comma, 145, comma, and then I'm going to do the same thing again, 14 divided by 7, and I'm going to close the parentheses, and I get 145. So the answer for this one is 145. Okay, that was lesson 14. The big difference for lesson 14, and if you look at my screen, it's in yellow, is sample size. That's the big, big deal. That's what makes this different from Lesson 13. So let's go down here right fast. I, I provided you some questions from Lesson 13 to help. So let's do what we did before. I don't want to make this video too long, but I want to make sure everybody understands. All right. So I have a mean. All right, let me read it. Sorry. According to a study, the height for Asian adult males is normally distributed with an average of 66 inches and a standard deviation of 2.5. So my mean for this one is 66. My standard deviation equals 2.5. Okay. I am there is no sample size. Okay. Since there's no sample size, that tells me this is not a lesson 14 problem, so I can't use the central limit theorem. Can't do it. It's just not what I can do in this because I don't give, I'm not given a sample size. Because remember, the central limit theorem is based on the number of samples you have. All right, so I'm going to go in here and let me do this. What's the proportion of Asian adult males between 64 and 70? Don't, please don't get confused when you think of lesson 15 of when it's using proportions. This is different, okay? So here I go, the proportions. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put all my stuff down here again, just to keep it straight in my mind. And then I know 64 and 70. They want me to find between these two. So bring out my calculator. Let me clear out my screen just to make it easier on us. So I'm gonna do second distribution, normal CDF, all right, so then I know I have two values. 64 is my smallest, comma, 70, comma, 66, and then comma, 2.5. Close it, and that's what I get. I get 0.7333. So I'm going to put this down here, 0.7333. All right, let's keep going. All right, what's the probability they're between five and six feet? All right, I just have to do a little math here. I'm going to do this and put it here. So then five feet, excuse me, to inches. Sorry about that. I got stuff going all over my screen. 
two inches. All right. So what I want to do is this five times twelve equals sixty inches, and then six feet to inches is six times twelve equals oops, 72 inches all right so here we go we we'll go up here clear this out second bars normal CDF so I'm gonna do the new the 60 to 72 and why did I do that because my original stuff's in inches I can't change measurements in a problem. It's not going to give me the correct answer. It's not really going to be happy with me because 5 and 6 is so much smaller than 66. So that's why I converted it. I'm going to go 66, oops, excuse me, 66, and then comma 2.5. Hit this, and then boom. So it gets me 9, 0.9836. So that's how I solved that problem. 0.98. 36, right? And then we'll come to the last one. Again, I'm copying and pasting. This just makes me, it makes it easier on me for to see everything. I'm going to put this on the next page. All right. And then now it wants the 65th percentile. So this makes this an inverse norm problem. Why? Again, because it wants a percentile and it's not giving me a value. Don't be confused because the 65th percentile is between 66 and the other values. That's not what it is. If you see the word percentile, boom, you know it's inverse norm. I'm going to go here, clear my screen again, second, distribution, go down here to inverse norm, 0.65, because I got to con convert everything to a decimal for the area when I'm doing it, 66, 2.5. Hit enter. There we go. So for this one, it is the 65th percentile is 66.96 inches. All right. I hope this helps for you guys to understand lesson 14 as opposed to lesson 13, because I'm going to put this here, lesson 13, because there is differences. And again, I'm going to show you the difference. Lesson 14. Look at the yellow. It gives you a sample size. Lesson 13, there's no sample size. Okay. I hope this helps. I'm going to do for lesson 15. I'm going to give it its own video to hope, hopefully help. All right. Thanks for watching the video and let me know if you need anything else.